Shalom and welcome. This is Yasha Ben Israel, aka Terry Whitfield, emanating from the Yasha Ben Israel Terry Whitfield show. Like to give you all a warm, warm welcome here. For this is the place where we prance through the fog just to glance through the smog. Yeah. Today I got a pretty good episode for you. Today I'll be explaining the definition, the origin, and the meaning of the word heathen. Yes. I'll be talking about the definition, the origin, a.k.a. etymology of the word heathen today. And I like to do this because when I use the word heathen, a lot of people take that as a pejorative statement. They take it as a negativity. And and you use that word, some people will uh, uh, try to find it as racist or demeaning if nothing else but I want to talk about the word heathen and my first source will be coming from the Oxford language dictionaries for the Oxford English dictionaries are widely regarded as the world's most authoritative sources on current English the dictionary is regularly updated with uh evidence from one of the world's largest lexical research programs and features over 350,000 words and phrases. So, the Oxford Languages Dictionary is a pretty good dictionary. It's the dictionary that you go to when you first punch up a word on Google. It is the dictionary that as that, 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 that soon as you punch a word up, the very first definition is going to come from the Oxford Languages Dictionaries. And I go through all of this to show you that when you do that, when you Google a word, the Oxford Dictionary is a very, very, very highly credible source for definitions of words in the English language. So I'm looking up the etymology first, which is the origin of the word okay and and the definition so when I go to the Oxford Languages Dictionary it says heathen noun derogatory noun heathen plural noun heathens plural noun the heathen a person who does not belong to a widely held religious especially that of Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, as regarded by those who do. That's basically saying those who are Christians, Muslims, and Jews, they regard anybody else who does not adhere to their religion as a heathen. I want to get a little bit off into that, but I'll do that a little bit later. Uh, synonym, similar, uh, pagan, infidel, idolater, unbeliever, uh, idolatress. Okay, uh, a follower of a polyistic religion, a pagan. Synonym, similar, pagan, infidel, idolater, in, uh, idolatress, unbeliever. Heathen people, collectively, especially in biblical use, those who did not worship the God of Israel. Hmm, interesting. I like to tap into a little bit of that too. Uh, the informal use of the word. An, un- an unenlightened person regard... A- a- excuse me, an unenlightened person. A person regarded as lacking culture or moral principles. That is the informal uh, use of the word in a usage in a sentence 
eat your chips, you little heathen. <laughs> okay. The origin. We get to the origin. Oh, uh, um, the origin. It says, uh, Old English heathen or haven of Germanic origin related to the Dutch haven from the Germanic haid, generally regarded as a specifically Christian use of a Germanic adjective meaning inhabiting open country from the base of the word heath. We look up the word heath here. Heath. Noun. Heath. Plural noun. Heaths. Noun. Crossed leaven heath. Plural noun. Crossed leaven heaths. With the S. Number one. British. An area of open, uncultivated land, especially in Britain, with characteristic vegetation of heather, gorse, or coarse grasses. Ecology. Vegetation dominated by dwarf dwarf shrubs of the heath family. Two. A dwarf shrub with small leathery leaves and small pink or purple bell-shaped flowers. Characteristics of heathen land and or moorland. Hmm. And or moorland. Well, the reason why they say and or moorland and you got British and moor here. Because the Moors originally inhabited the land before the Europeans or the Gentile Anglo-Saxon white Germanics. Now this word heathen, what it basically really, really, really means is one, one who lived in the open uncultivated land, especially in Britain. Open, uncultivated land. Pretty much like that word, like a a person who lived in the country. Okay? The people who lived in the countrysides and the hillsides. You see what I'm saying? Uh, Like a country person. It would be pretty much like a country person. In contrast to today's city person and country person. You know, you had the city dwellers and you had those country people, which were the people who lived in the uncultivated lands of Europe. You know, the country people. We were into in America in today's time, that would be like the country person, the so-called hillbilly. Okay? And the reason why the Israelites, the God of Israel and the people of Israel. The Israelites were city people, city dwellers, for the most part. They were city creators. They created cities, and they were city people. One thing about the cities is that cities are densely populated. They're fast-paced, you know, like New York. They call New York the city that never sleep. It's fast-paced. People in the city are usually swifter, intellectually, with cunningness, and all of that, than country people. Why is that? Because information spreads fastly, swiftly, in the city's dense population. All of the new fads, all of the new trends, everything that comes out. In the cities, information passes swiftly. The information about the God of Israel radiated throughout cities throughout the world. And it was the people that was not in the cities that did not know about the God of Israel, especially in Britain. In the cities, 
Christianity had dominated the cities. So the God of Israel was heard of in the cities of Britain. But it was those in the countrysides, in the hillsides, that did not know about the God of Israel, especially to the degree as those of the cities. It was in the cities that the churches and the synagogues and the mosques and the religious institutions were built. So information thrived and flourished and traveled swiftly throughout cities. If the people in the cities were always the first to be informed, the people in the countrysides and in the heaths were the last to be informed. They were the last to hear of anything. We can, I am reminded of watching the Beverly Hillbillies growing up. And when Granny came into all of this money from uh, 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 all of, basically when she came into all of this money from living in the, uh, the heaths of America, places that didn't have much, people that lived off the land, they didn't have markets, so they ate actual animals that they killed. They ate actual fruits and vegetables and vegetation that they snatched up from the ground. They did not go to marketplaces. They wasn't dealing in money and commerce and things like that to the degree of those in the city. So when Granny and them came into the money, they moved, packed up the truck, and they moved to Beverly. And when they got to Beverly Hills, that is, they start to come into the money and they start to learn a new lifestyle. So Granny bought a, a, a washing machine and dryer. And when they threw the clothes in the washing machine and 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 she saw through the window how the clothes was washing in the washing machine and going round and round. Man, she was just amazed. She never saw nothing like that. But everybody in the city knew what a washing machine was. And and had long knew what a washing machine was. And and she was just amazed by it. She didn't know what to make of it at first. It was just totally beyond the scope of her comprehension of what this thing really, really was about. She didn't know whether to shoot it or what. (laughs) You know, but that being the case, that's just to show you what the word heathen means. The word heathen usually refers to the the, the Anglo-Saxon hillbilly. The Anglo-Saxon countryside person. The Anglo-Saxon person who knows nothing about the God of Israel. And those that are influenced by that Anglo-Saxon person are the heathenized of the heathen. Those specific groups of people Those are the ones that I refer to when I refer to the heathens. So when I talk about America being a heathenistic society, I'm talking about a society that knows nothing of the trueness and the pureness of the God, the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm talking about a people who more rooted in the ideas of that of the American. The Anglos, the Saxons, the Jutes, the British, the Irish, and all of those Germanic tribes. The Vikings, the Goths, the Visigoths, the Volgars, the Burgundians, All of these Germanic tribes, all of those who did not live in the cities, who lived in the, I I can't call it farmland because they was not even intelligent enough to build farms at that time. 
They were people who lived in the wild open countryside. The heathen, the barbarians, those who lacked law and order. The law and order of the Elohim of the God of Israel. That is what I mean when I refer to the term heathen. Is it racial? Is it religious? Maybe so, maybe no. But surely this person, when I says it, is void of the understanding of the knowledge, wisdom of the Elohim, Yahuwah of Israel. That is what I mean when I refer to or convey the term heathen he who must have come from the heathens that being stated I that concludes the uh, this episode of the Yashab in Israel show I thank you all for listening stay tuned for much more enlightening information for the heathen is those who are unenlightened. Shalom, shalom.